Welcome to Top Line Hotline. I want to run. I want to hide. I want to top line my hotline from the inside. I want to reach out where GTM leaders need answers to their burning questions. On Top Line Hotline. I don't know how you come up with this. Yeah. I don't know. Sam, you missed your Hello. calling. You should just I do think, intros. I, no, this is my calling. I'm doing my <laughs> calling. The calling is happening as we speak. It's Top Line Hotline. It is a short, informative segment with my friends AJ and Asad where we answer questions from the Pavilion Slack and the broader Chief Revenue Officer community writ large around the world. We're happy to be here. It's Thirsty Thursday. That's all I got. What's Thoughtful Thursday. Thoughtful Thursday. Thoughtful, thinkful. Yeah, thankful. Okay. <laughs> Um, Thimble Thursday. So this this is an interesting question because this is a question from a person, but a problem that many have. So the question is, I'm a CRO at a Series A company. I love the problem we solve, the space we're in, and was really excited to join the company a year ago. But the headwinds have been significant for us and we've had to cut costs. And 2024 is also looking a bit choppy. I'm now an individual contributor. And I'm not making the OTE that I had. And it's not clear that we're going to thrive in the medium term, but it's also not clear that we won't. And so what should I do? Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? AJ. Well, Austin, you know what you should do is, I know how much you love ENPS surveys. So send out an ENPS (laughs) survey to the company. (laughs) Let's look at the glass door. (laughs) Glass door reviews. Amazon book reviews, anyone? (laughs) So mean. uh, I'm not being mean. I get it. It's frustrating. It's the lost generation, as Jason Lemkin has said. And this is part of the the challenges. Um, I think the person that's writing this has is is right to feel this way. It's just human nature doesn't feel like good to not feel like you're growing your skill set. And I think you just that I would say if you like the product and you like what you're doing, those are great things. The three things I always talk about, always talk about for should I stay or should I go is mission and vision. Do I believe in what the company's doing and where we're headed? The people, do I not just your boss, but the people that work around you? And am I learning and growing? And if you have all three of those things, you should be happy. Technically, you should be happy. But the learning and growing is tough. I think that's the one where we have to be a little bit more proactive. And the company is not always going to afford us the opportunities to quote learn and grow. That's usually vis a vis headcount or costs of learning and growing and traveling and, and doing all these things that we have typically done. So if you're not finding that that's the case, you know, I think that that's something that you can proactively do and it's on you. I would say that this person should stay where they are and uh, they're not going to have a grass is greener situation if they were to like leave and go somewhere Is there else. a timeline you would put on that? Like, is this yeah. like, okay, because it's a fundamental well, shift, right? Somebody went from a true CRO to like an account executive. Here's what I recommend, so- I said, listen to our top line episode where Sam made some very good points earlier about, hey, if you're still seeing the challenges and the headwinds that you saw last year, you're seeing them Mm. this year, then you probably should look elsewhere. So go listen to that episode now. Sam, what do you have to add to this? I think my, here's what I give my advice to everybody. Here's my default advice. My (laughs) default advice to every person asking, should I stay or should I go is that they should stay. Ah. So that is my default. Doesn't mean you should just and get means... a side hustle, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Side hustles are harder to come by these days. <laughs> I need a side hustle. Uh, this is my side hustle, I guess. Um, no, but I, 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 I mean that. I think that people tend to, people tend to overestimate what's outside, and you know they they over estimate the value or the ease, you know, it's the phrase, the grass is always greener. That's a cliche for a reason. And I think people fail to understand that any collection of human beings is by definition going to be totally messed up. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a government, a company, a family, whenever you get people together with differing interests that are going to tend to reduce all of life's complexities to binary us versus them, you know, stereotypes and archetypes that 
um, it's always going to be messed up. There's always you're always going to have a be annoyed with your boss. And so I think what AJ said is is really good feedback. And I think that there's something to be said for being resilient and sticking something out. You know, it, 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 it what was really interesting is this is a sales leader saying now I am also the sales the you know the the revenue leader that says salespeople do not control the fate of the destiny you know the fate of the company just solely in their own hands it's it's a team sport revenue generation is a team sport but he says you know I'm uh it's not clear that we're going to thrive in the medium term but it's not clear that we won't that to me sounds like you could make an impact mm. Mr or Mrs former CRO a turned fight individual to fight. contributor like you're on the field you know yeah. this is an opportunity for you to change the the trajectory of this company i can tell you that uh, you know, six months ago, nine months ago at Pavilion, things were looking different. And there's a group of people that decided they were going to help fix it. And that that group includes Kathleen Booth and that group includes Carly Palace and that includes me and Aaron Leader and Brian Elsesser and Tom Andrews and Samantha Carducci and Colin Campbell. And guess what? There's nothing better than earning the win. There's nothing better than things were on the precipice, they could have gone south or north, and we decided what they were going to do. And that's, again, AJ's point. The economy is not the reason that this company is facing choppy waters. And even this person said they may or they may not. That tells me that your effort plays a role. Don't you want to mm. be part of the winning team? Don't you want to be Pat Mahomes you know, in overtime, driving down the field, Victory not guaranteed. It is up to you. I think that that's an, a really exciting opportunity. Also, by the way, you know, I appreciate that you're not making the OTE that you were making, but typically ICs can make higher OTEs. And certainly to the point of how we've talked about zero compensation in the past, you probably deserve it more when you're getting overpaid as an IC than as a CRO. So I, I know a lot of people, again, that have that have embraced the opportunity to be an IC, that enjoy not having a big team to be responsible for, that enjoy not having to be a manager, that appreciate that they can go out and close business and it goes right to their checking account and it helps the company. So my default advice is you have an opportunity here to make a difference and make an impact and rise to the occasion and be part of this journey and get to say, I remember back in 2024 when the outcome was in doubt and we all pulled together to have to to win the game. That seems to me exciting. So that's that's what I think. And by the way, um, none of us, the three of us, we don't have assured outcomes. We have no idea what it's going to look like. And we also We're don't have the right. To, we me and AJ specifically, uh, we can't quit. Yeah, mm -hmm. like literally, we're, we're, we're trapped. <laughs> we've we've <laughs> tried many times. It's a Catholic marriage for you guys. We've, not possible. We've I'm stuck with this guy. We tried to take the off ramp. It's not really doable. There is no off ramp. It is. Um, yeah. So I, I like the, Sam. That's the exact right advice. Do you want to be part of the story and be part of the journey? Asad and I were talking about this the other week because there's someone that reached out to me and I, and Asad knew this person. And I was like, Asad, take a look at their LinkedIn profile and what they did. And you, what was the quip that you made, Asad? It was really good. I think this was a person who had written that uh, they took a company from 100 million to 130 million, but yeah. <laughs> in like a couple of months, but actually they had a functional job, not like the complete ownership. You, of you the, said this was market. like they were a janitor at a baseball stadium and they're like, we won the World <laughs> Series. <laughs> Well, yeah. it takes a village. I, I think of this idea of, there are a few concepts that have been floating around in my head right now. One is, at the end of the day, when you are retired, who looks back and has and feels better about their career? And I think they're mercenaries and missionaries in the world, and both can make a lot of money, and both can be very successful. But I think the mercenary would just jump ship every time it gets a little bit hard. And I think the missionaries kind of put their heads down and they say the best stories are where there has been some adversity and resiliency needs adversity. So I'm going to power through this. And if I can turn this around, I'm going to remember this memory vividly because not everything in your life do you remember vividly. But when you overcome difficult things, you remember that vividly and you want a lot of vivid memories at the end of your career. So I think there's something to say for try to try to load up on a bunch of those and this is a perfect opportunity to develop one of those. The other is that I think of this concept of great work. Like great work is, is this thing that we should all try to optimize for. And I think 
To do it, you have to build a career in a space that's economically viable, doing something that is at the intersection of your talents and your interests. That is the bare minimum required for you to be able to do great work. Um, but great work also requires really tough moments because you learn and you grow in those moments and you learn how to do things better and with constraints and turn things around. And this, again, sounds like a great opportunity for that. So, Sam, I, I like your default. I like your default being if it, the question is, should I stay or should I go? Most likely you should stay. And then there's some nuanced cases where you should go and you can convince yourself about that. But 90% of people should just stay and fight through it. And the, the last thing I would like to say on this matter is the following. Um, the equity is you and you're earning it every day. And most people have, they have these define, even I sometimes, you know, what's going to happen with pavilion? It's like, well, my, or what's going to happen with quota path for AJ? What's going to happen with sales talent agency for Asset? Our lives will continue for a long time after these companies. And these are experiences that will redound to our personal benefit over 20, 30, 40 years. And these experiences will manifest themselves in terms of opportunity well beyond this particular, whether this company has an outcome or doesn't have an outcome. And I would just encourage people to take a long-term view. And again, I don't do this all the time, so I need mm. to remind myself of this myself, but I'm going to be just fine no matter what happens with Pavilion. You know, I am continuing to learn. I'm continuing to grow. I'm continuing to be a better CEO. So whatever happens with Pavilion, there will be opportunities afterward. And all I want to do is show up every day and do my best work, do great work, like you said, Asad. And that's what I would encourage this person listening and all of our listeners. It's not yeah. about, is this company going to succeed? When will we sell? When will the M&A event will be? It's do great work, show up every day. Let's not miss a top line episode, right? Yeah. Every week we want to show yeah. up. We want one day something will happen with this podcast. And if not, who cares? Cause it's fun. Yeah. 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 And you, you know, that, that, uh, some people have side hustles. Sam Jacobs has <laughs> podcast jingles. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine right. it becomes a thing. <laughs> if people <laughs> like engage you for that jingle. <laughs> okay. This was a great episode. That's the episode. That's it, everybody. Uh, give us five stars on iTunes or Spotify. Tell your friends about it. Uh, put it in your LinkedIn headline, listener of top line. Yeah. Like the second thing after your job. And we will send you $12,000 in Bitcoin and from AJ's for Bitcoin. Bitcoin closing in on its all-time high. Let's go yeah. crypto. All Let's right. go. Talk to you next week, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Topline Hotline.